Hi folks, welcome to another 10 Talk. I'm excited, um, Dave Knowlton uh, is joining us today and he's gonna talk about uh, in this whole remote environment, you know, we're, we're, we're coming up with new strategies and, and new ways, and some of them are the ways we've always done it, of asking students to express themselves, express themselves in writing especially. And in this new environment, I think even more so, we can get very tempted uh, to really be thinking about grading and construct how they're constructing their writing. Not that that's not important. But we never want to do that to the point that we actually hurt their ability to shape those ideas. And I know that's what you're really going to dig into and how we can be very, very careful about that. So Dave Knowlton is a professor of instructional technology at SIUE. I'm Nancy Latham from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And we're, I'm excited. I think it's so interesting to me, David, as we've gone through this uh, you know, the, the pandemic and the things that led us very quickly into remote instruction, um, how we're now we're starting to dig deeper into like these this morsel you're talking about okay let's get a little deeper here you know in what we're doing that's exactly right nancy and i am absolutely delighted to be here and it is about digging deeper and thinking about how students think. So as Nancy said, I am from the instructional technology program at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. I also am the co-host of the Learning Vibes podcast. And I hope that all your viewers might check out the podcast at learningvibespodcast.weebly.com. And Nancy, where I would like to start is to ask your viewers to look at their own behavior for a minute. And maybe you and I look at ours as well. So just some probing questions for your viewers to think about here. I wonder how many of your viewers keep a diary, a journal, a poetry notebook, some sort of pieces of writing, but that are meant for their eyes only and that they would not show to anybody else. I wonder if any of your viewers, and Nancy, maybe you've done this, have written a letter or an email to someone, but then didn't send it? Have you done that, Nancy? Well, you know, my big test is if I found that I really was pounding the keys as I wrote, it probably should go in drafts. Is the <laughs> there we go. Exactly. How many of your viewers have ever made a pro-con decision list to help them decide something important and nobody saw it except them? And finally, how many of your viewers talk out loud to themselves when they're alone? In the shower, in the car, while out on a walk on a beautiful day? I do this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the question we should ask ourselves educationally is why? What's the value of doing this? And I want to share one more. I want to share on that by building on that. I think the answer is we learn what it is we are thinking from hearing or seeing our own words. And don't take my, my word for it. Let's look at what some famous people say. The novelist John Updike said, writing and rewriting are a constant search for what one is saying. Steve Martin said, the more I wrote, the more I recognized that I had great ideas within me. The playwright Tennessee Williams said, a writer keeps surprising himself. He doesn't know what he is saying until he sees it on the page. Now, sexist language aside here in this quote, that's true for females as well as males. And my favorite one, the novelist E.M. Forrester said, how do I know what I think until I see what I have to say? <laughs> my 
favorite example of this, a couple of more examples. And what I'm trying to convince your viewers of is that there is value in giving students a safe place to articulate themselves, to play out ideas in a judgment-free zone. That's where we're going here. But let me share one more quote with you. This quote is from a very strong author by the name of Anne Lamott, who, if you enjoy writing, she has a book called Bird by Bird. And forgive me, I'm going to read to you here for the sake of time, but here is her quote. For me and most of the other writers I know, Writing is not rapturous. In fact, the only way I can get anything written at all is to write really, really cruddy, I will say, not the word she used, first drafts. The first draft is the child's draft, where you let it all pour out and then let it romp all over the place, knowing that no one is going to see it and you can shape it later. You just let this childlike part of you channel whatever voices and visions come through and onto the page. Just get it all down on paper because there may be something in the great in those six crazy pages that you would have never found by more rational or grown-up means. And I'll stop reading there. But I think the point, Nancy, is that if professional authors and mature adults have to go through a process of finding their thoughts. And they can't just find it by thinking about it. They have to see it on paper or hear it. Then don't our students need that too? I've got to share one more example with you because it's so great. And I'm a little embarrassed to share this example because I'm showing my age. Some of your viewers might be too young to know who Ann Landers is. <laughs> but I'm certain that Nancy knows who Ann Landers is, and some of you will. Ann Landers was a newspaper advice columnist, and you could write her and ask her anything. And this is my favorite letter ever written to Ann Landers. And it comes from the 1970s. But just listen to this and the process this author goes through. She says, Dear Ann, I'm a 26-year-old woman, and I feel like a fool for even asking you this question. But should I marry the guy or not? Jerry is 30, but sometimes he acts like he's 14. We've been together for nearly a year. He was married for three years, but every time I ask him about it, he changes the subject. My parents haven't said anything either for him or against him, but I know deep down they don't like him much. I can see it in their eyes. Jerry is a salesman and makes great money, but he has lost his wallet three times since I've known him, and I've had to help him make the payments on his car twice. The thing that bothers me the most, Anne, I think is that I have the feeling he doesn't trust me. After every date he telephones, he says it's to say an extra good night but I'm sure he's checking to make sure I didn't have a late date with someone else. One night I was in the shower and didn't hear the phone ring. He came over and sat on the porch all night. I found him asleep on the swing when I went to get the paper the next morning at 6 a.m. I had a hard time convincing him he, I had been in the house the whole time. Now on the plus side, he's Gorgeous. Sexy, too. Well, that does it. 
I've been sitting here for 15 minutes with this pen in my hand, trying to think of something else good to say about Jerry, and nothing comes to mind. Don't bother to answer this letter, Anne. You have helped me more than you will ever know. Helped her? Anne didn't do anything. But there's the point. There's the so what. Give students room to write freely and find their idea, to talk freely and discover what they're thinking. And please don't correct their grammar, spelling, and punctuation while they're still trying to discover and find their idea. Be concerned with their learning, not their earning of points and grades. Stay away from grading while they're going through the process of figuring out what they have to say. Right now in the online world of this pandemic, if you're using chat or discussion board to let students answer questions or ask questions or figure things out, give them the psychological space to do that without judgment and let them go through that process of using their own words to make sense of it and figure it out. And this is true for high school seniors. It's true for five-year-olds. What do you think, Nancy? Does this fit with the things that you teach? Absolutely. You know, I, the one thing I was thinking too, as you were wrapping that up was, I thought we also have to be mindful in these remote environments. When we are using chat and discussion boards and things even more, that we also sometimes have to protect that sometimes they would like to draft and communicate completely as an individual. With that, with that element, they might be freer with that element. I mean, there are great times for group and group contribution, but sometimes I might want my initial thoughts to just be mine or between myself and the teacher, I, I might be freer. So we, we've got to think about now all those variables. When we, we constantly say to learners, throw that in the chat, well, maybe they don't want everybody to see their first thought or, or what they're thinking, you know. I think it's a great point. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about brainstorming sessions with students, but the research is actually quite clear that asking students to come as a group and form ideas together really results in groupthink and a narrow range of ideas. Give students that space to form their ideas and shape their ideas individually before they bring them to the group, Absolutely. which I think fits perfectly with what you were just saying. Yeah, thank you, David. This was great. We appreciate it. We will have all of the things that you talked about and more in the top 10 list to support this. So folks, please find that. I appreciate it. It was good to see you, David. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.